Hi, I'm Sheila, absent and grateful. I weigh and measure three meals a day off the gray sheet, write them down, call them into my sponsor. I eat my meals no matter what. I don't eat in between meals no matter what. And absence gives me the life I have today. I'm sitting here, it's the day before Thanksgiving, pondering about Thanksgiving and what it's going to bring and what it really means to me. My first Thanksgiving was fraught with fear and anxiety about what was going to happen. I was always um, a cooker at Thanksgiving, and I loved making the meals at Thanksgiving. It was a creative art thing for me to be able to do, and I loved seeing people eat my food and really enjoying it. But it was going to be my very first time as an abstinent grace sheeter, and what was I going to do? Um, about the food and what was I going to do about cooking things that we don't eat in gray sheet. The first year there were things that I for sure did not cook and I was grateful about not having to cook them. Other things didn't bother me, but I really focused on the fact that I was grateful from the bottom of my toes not to ever have to eat the way that I used to eat in Thanksgiving. It was always about the food, how much I could eat, how much I could hide. Uh, it was just basically a binge day. And I remember sitting at the table thinking, watching all my other relatives and friends eat with great gusto, that I had my beautiful planned non-diet gray sheet food in front of me that I was enjoying and I made the mistake of saying I am so sorry that y'all are not eating food like mine it is so good and everybody looked at me like I was nuts and I thought I'm probably never going to say that again so I just secretly enjoy my food and the fact that it's mine, and it's going to keep me safe. I felt safe that first Thanksgiving with my weighed and measured meal in front of me. And I planned the day before, even before I called it into my sponsor, what exactly that I wanted to eat for Thanksgiving. Um, and how was I going to celebrate abstinence on Thanksgiving? And I had it all planned out, and I knew what I was going to eat for my breakfast, my lunch, and my dinner. And I was just grateful that entire day. One of the things, though, that I did have to fight with was people asking me, how in the world can you cook all this stuff and be around it and not want to eat it? And I thought about it, and I thought, you know, this is not my food that I'm cooking. It belongs to y'all, not me. And it just doesn't really make any difference, really, about it. I just don't think too much about it anymore. It just sort of washes over me. I've learned not to romance. Oh, my gosh, I really wish I could have eaten that. Or um, maybe someday I'll get this. I think that may help some people, but it did not really help me. I thought, you know, that's just really not mine to eat. Um, and it's just really astonishing that people would just keep talking about it all the time over and over and even it's been nine years and even this Thanksgiving I'm sure somebody's going to say how can you make this stuff and not want to eat it but I've learned to just sort of change the subject and move on uh, to something else because I get to eat things that I get to eat and the thing that just delights me no end, too, about my gray sheet food is it is not a diet. I don't have to sit there and read recipes on how to get rid of a few calories uh, so that I will feel good about my Thanksgiving meal. Um, it's not fraught with anxiety and guilt uh, when I eat it. I eat it with joy and celebration and thanksgiving 
that gray sheet is there for me and it's there for other gray sheeters. It's there for anybody to tap in. So I am eternally grateful that no longer for Thanksgiving do I have to be consumed with food. I can think about things that I'm grateful for for today. The other two things that have gotten me by on tough times were the two slogans we use all the time in Gray Sheet. Don't eat no matter what. And there is always another meal coming. Those two slogans have gotten me through every possible situation everyone and I just love them and also the mantra that we always say hi I'm Sheila I weigh and measure three meals a day off the gray sheet I write them down I call them into my sponsor I don't eat no matter what I eat my meals no matter what and absence gives me the life I have today thanks Hi, my name is Erica, and I am a recovering compulsive overeater. And I have um, been weighing and measuring my food uh, without exception since August 27th of 2012. And I was just going to talk for a few minutes about my first Thanksgiving that I did while on my food program. And it was interesting. I had been doing it. I had been doing it since the end of June, and you know, had gotten some flack from family members. I'm married. I have uh, several children and extended family who live nearby where we get together and eat at least once a week. And so I had, you know, already gone through several what we'll call no matter what's where people would make fun of my food or say, why are you not, when are you going to stop? And when are you going to eat, you know, give yourself a treat? You can't do this if you don't have a treat every once in a while. You won't, it won't last. And so I'd already gone through a couple of those and was gearing up for my first Thanksgiving. And, you know, it was important that I was the host for Thanksgiving because I wanted to have control over the food that I was preparing. I wanted to make sure that Things that I didn't eat weren't added and then I wasn't told about it. You know, things like sugar and flour and, you know, other um, processed refined carbohydrates that I don't eat. So um, I took on the responsibility of being the... And then I asked the other people who were coming who were not compulsive eaters or who were not, in, you know, practicing any form of... Um, food plan and I asked them if they would be in charge of the other items that I, I didn't want to prepare that were definitely not you know the, the thing that you eat at the end of the meal or that white you know stuff that is that you eat as well I, you know it's like so I gave them those chores and, and the things that I did were you know the protein the the healthier vegetables and things like that and it turned out, um, you know, a lot of what I had built up in my mind as far as anxiety, people were going to be looking at me, um, people were going to be paying attention to what I was eating. People really weren't. They didn't care. Yes, every once in a while I'd have someone look at look at my food and say, are you really going to eat all that? Because I eat a lot of food at dinner, <laughs> surprisingly, for someone who's lost 105 pounds and kept it off for three years. I eat uh, a lot of vegetables and um, a lot of good food. And so, you know, uh, I got that kind of comment once. And, um, you know, I was just like, yeah, I am. You know, you just, I think having what I was going to say, just being, being cognizant that, you know, it was going to be okay. It was just a meal. There was going to be, you know, another meal coming the next day. And what was most important was being able to spend time with these people who I have a relationship with, their family or their close friends. And um, one of the mistakes that I did, mainly because I didn't know, is I, I waited until everyone else had gone through the, 
line and was ready to sit down and eat before I started preparing my food. And I know now I, I prepare my food first. I weigh and measure my food first. I put it on the table and then everyone else can go through because then no one's waiting on me. There's not that awkward sitting around, you know, or that awkward rush in there, sit down. Okay, let's all eat. And then I go back out, out of the dining area, back into the kitchen to prepare my food. So that's something that I didn't know that my first Thanksgiving. I wish I had known that because that would have taken my anxiety down a little bit because I was so concerned. And then there's also the concern. Now, of course, I'm a Southerner, so I overcompensate in the food department. But there's the concern that there's not going to be enough. And so if you're last to serve yourself and... Um, you weigh and measure your food or you have a certain amount of food that you eat, you know, you, you don't want to go through that food line and go, well, is there enough protein or are there enough cooked vegetables or is there enough salad? I can almost guarantee you there's always going to be enough salad because, um, or I shouldn't say that specific word, I can almost guarantee you that there will be enough food um, simply because, um, Simply because, it, especially if you're the if you're the host, you've prepared it. But again, something I wish I had remembered was it's not bad manners for me to serve myself first, so that I make sure that I have what I need. And I think that's something that abstinence has taught me. That being on a food plan like I am on now has taught me that it's okay to put my needs first to make sure I'm taking care of myself, that I'm taking care of my health, that I'm taking care of my body. Because me, an active food addiction is very bad. I was pushing 300 pounds on a very regular basis for over 20 years. I um, carried around a lot of anger and resentment and you know, bitterness, and I was always feeling like I wasn't getting my share. And so by having a food plan where I actually weigh and measure my food, I've gotten my portion. And then I also now know that it's enough. I'm not going to die between meals. But learning to put myself first and that that's not a bad thing was something I didn't know before. And, um, but you make it. You make it through any holiday, whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever holiday you, you celebrate. Um, you make it through. And I have learned, and I learned even that first abstinent Thanksgiving, to put the needs of myself when it comes to my food first. And then when I'm at the table, it's not about what I'm eating and comparing. It's about building, deepening, strengthening relationships that I have with the people that I'm surrounded with. So um, best of luck to you as you go through your first abstinent Thanksgiving. You can do it. Stay in the moment. Um, Have your plan. Call a friend. Role play if needed. Talk about what you're afraid of. Write it down and uh, get it out so that um, you can go through it because you can. I did about to do my fourth abstinent Thanksgiving and couldn't be more excited about it. And um, I don't eat foods I'm not supposed to, no matter what. Thanks. Hi, my name is Eileen, and I am abstinent because I weigh and measure three meals a day off the gray sheet. And I'm here to talk about my first Thanksgiving. I remember it was back in 1995, And I was driving down from Boston to Connecticut to visit my sister and her family and the rest of my family. And um, they were serving the traditional meal that we always had, which was a plus for me because I knew exactly what was going to be on the table. It never varied from year to year. So I had a really good idea of um, what would be there and what I needed to bring for backup. Um, I knew that I wouldn't need protein. I knew that I would definitely need vegetables because um, 
the cooked vegetables that I liked that would be served there, there would only be a very small bowl of them for about 10 people. And I would probably, if I were to try to weigh eight ounces of that vegetable, I would have to use the whole bowl and maybe still not have eight ounces. So, um, I, I brought back up vegetable for myself and I brought, salad for myself because my family doesn't eat salad and so I came prepared for everything that I would that I knew I would need and um when I got there I was a little nervous because I hadn't weighed and measured in front of my family before and um I had told my sister about it and my sister and I had actually uh been in another uh, 12-step fellowship for food and we had done a little bit of weighing and measuring ourselves but it had been many many years and it wasn't as strict as the gray sheet is so something like a family dinner I wouldn't have to weigh and measure <laughs> in that fellowship so um, that would be an exception you know I'd only needed to do that when I was at home at my own kitchen so this was this is a different thing about the gray sheet because we weigh and measure our food no matter what and um, we make no exceptions and so Thanksgiving at my sister's house um, you might think would be a friendly place and it, actually it was but I was very anxious about it. I was nervous. I didn't know what people would say. I didn't know how much um, attention I would get for weighing and measuring my food. And I really didn't want attention for that at all. I wished nobody noticed. Um, but some people did. And um, I have to say, I brought a, a long vegetable that I liked um, even though they had the same vegetable at my sister's house, they added lots of things to it. And they added things that included sugar. And um, so I couldn't eat that. And my abstinence was more important to me than uh, eating what had been prepared already. So I went to the trouble before I left Boston to make my vegetables the way that I liked them and the way that I could eat them abstinently and I was glad that I did. Um, my brother-in-law looked at me and looked at my plate with, you know, I was the only one with raw vegetables on the plate with a salad and I was the only one with um, a cooked vegetable that was a little bit different and he knew that I had done it differently and so, you know, he looked at me as if I was some kind of a Martian but I don't I don't really care. I didn't care then, but it did hurt my feelings, but it wasn't going to stop me or make me change what I was doing. It's a great thing to be committed to my gray sheet abstinence before I go somewhere. Um, it's good that I went to meetings ahead of time and heard other people talk about how they handled holiday dinners with family. And, um, you know, one of the things that was good for me that I didn't have to deal with was that the meal was served at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, some people have holiday dinners at 3 or 4, which would totally throw me off of my, you know, having to have 4 to 6 hours in between my meals. And I usually get up pretty early. So to have to, you know, to have my breakfast at, say, 7 in the morning and then have to wait till 3 o'clock or 4 in the afternoon to have lunch would just be really hard. And trying to fit lunch and then another... So that... I did not have to deal with that, which I was really grateful for. And also, after lunch, um, after Thanksgiving lunch, a few hours later, when everybody else was groaning because they were still eating dessert or whatever, um, I could just weigh and measure my dinner and have the same protein and the same vegetables and salad that I brought and have a, a big, beautiful, delicious, weighed and measured abstinent meal, um, a second Thanksgiving dinner, if you will. And to me, that was a real nice little perk of being abstinent that, um, you know, I was hungry again and I could eat again and... Um, it didn't matter that I was by myself in the kitchen, you know, when everybody else was z zonked out in front of the TV. I, 
I had my first abstinent Thanksgiving, and I was I ate wonderful food. It tasted delicious. It was good for me, and um, and I got through the day. And uh, so I wish that for everybody listening to this um, to this tape. And I wish you all happy holidays and the best feeling in the world that comes from knowing that you're being good to yourself, that you're being kind and nourishing with your food, and that you're not hurting yourself anymore with food, which is what I can now do every single darn day. So thanks, everybody.